Hello and welcome to a new edition. Uh, so in this episode, we are going to look at how to provision EKS uh, or for that matter, Kubernetes to use the principle of least privilege, right? So especially when it comes to deploying pods on Kubernetes. So what exactly is the principle of least privilege? So the principle states that any application that's deployed should have just about the bare minimum access to AWS services that it needs to do its job. Nothing more, nothing less. So what this means is that if you have a part that needs access to S3, that's the only access it should have. It should not have any other access. It should not be able to access Secrets Manager or any other AWS services. Or if a part is actually have much more fine-grained access, wherein let's say the part only needs to read from S3, in which case the part cannot write to S3. Right? So how do you use uh, the facilities that are available in EK, uh, in, in AWS to provision uh, parts with, with the principle of least privilege, right? So in this episode, we are going to look at the usage of IAM roles and service accounts to, uh, to bring up parts that are going to have uh, this uh, principle baked into them, the principle of least privilege, wherein the parts will come up with just about the bare minimum privilege they need to do their job. That's it, right? So the, des the description section of this uh, uh, video is gonna have links to some code and so on. So please uh, look at that. And also feel free to post your questions uh, uh, in the comment section. Uh, this is not the only way to do this. This is one of the more uh, established ways to do it uh, using IAM roles and service accounts. But there are other ways as well. So in subsequent videos, we are going to look at various other ways to actually, you know, implement the principle of least privilege uh, when it comes to Kubernetes, right? So in this episode, we'll, but uh, we are going to just focus on IAM roles and service accounts uh, uh, to accomplish the principle of least privilege. Okay, so let's look at uh, this diagram over here. So we have this EKS cluster. For the sake of this uh, demo, let's assume that it has one worker node on which uh, two pods are deployed. They're up and running. There's pod A and pod B. The requirement here is that pod A is only supposed to read from S3 and pod B can both read and write to S3. So to accomplish something like this in EKS, the first thing that needs to happen is an OIDC provider has to be enabled for that particular cluster, right? So this is the first thing that needs to be done. There are CLI commands that you can execute against uh, uh, the cluster uh, to enable the OIDC provider. And uh, I will have those uh, links in the description section of this video. Now, the next step is to create a role that basically is going to be used by pod A to kind of read from S3. So a role will be created. This is a regular IAM role that has the privileges or the policy to read from S3. Okay, so this is the next step. Then we'll also create a secondary role for part B to use. And this role will both read and write from S3. All right. Additionally, each one of these roles should establish a trust with the OIDC provider. So they should be the OIDC provider on the trust tab of the IAM role. Right? So this should be the trusted entity. Okay, So it's the same with uh, role B. The trust has to be established with the OIDC provider. So OI the OIDC provider is the uh, a trusted principal for the IAM role. Now the next step is the creation of service tokens. Right? Uh, service accounts ra rather. Sorry. Service accounts. So you first need to create a service account for pod A that's going to be associated with pod A. 
and this service account is going to annotate this role over here okay similarly a service account will be created for part b and that service account will annotate or refer to this particular role over here that will enable uh, this part B to read and write from S3. Now, of course, these are uh, for the sake of uh, this, uh, you know, demo, they are all in the same namespace. And uh, we will, if, if, that's all we need to do to, uh, to basically ensure that part A has a token that's mounted onto it that can only enable it to read from S3 and pod B has a short lived token that's mounted on pod B uh, that will let a pod B read and write uh, from S3. So for the demo, what we are going to do is we are first going to build uh, the image uh, for a pod A and pod B, which is pretty much going to be the same image. This image will have the AWS CLI. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, utility uh, installed, which will uh, let us uh, run the CLI commands against, uh, you know, uh, AWS. And uh, then we'll look at uh, the IAM role and the policy attached to role A, and we'll look at uh, uh, IAM role uh, for role B uh, that uh, has the policy to both read and write. And uh, also we'll look at the trust established over here and then we can basically deploy these two parts and we'll execute into this part and we'll test, uh, you know, against uh, S3 to see if we are able to read from this particular part and we'll also try to write and see if it fails and then we'll actually read and write from part B and uh, if everything that uh, we did uh, worked, then we should be able to both create uh, buckets and we should be able to read from the existing buckets. Okay, so first uh, step as, I, as we had seen in the previous sections was to verify if the OIDC provider uh, exists, uh, you know, on that uh, particular uh, uh, cluster, right? So uh, we basically uh, can run this command and to see the list of OIDC providers or the OIDC connect providers, right? So one, we, we already have one. So the description section will have the details of how to enable this. Now the next step is to kind of look at the roles that we wanted uh, for the pods to assume, right? So let's uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, the cluster uh, to see, uh, you know, where we have these IAM roles. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, so this is the cluster, uh, sorry, this is the IAM roles. So we have two roles. One is uh, to provide full access to S3. And the second role is the uh, read-only role, right? So if you look at the role that uh, provides the full access, uh, this is the policy that's attached to that role. And as we had seen, the trust is going to refer to the OIDC provider over here. And one more important thing to note here is that this particular service account and this namespace over here, that is there on the cluster, right? So this is something that we are going to create or, um, or rather see how it's been created. So this is what we need to tie uh, together, okay? So let's look at both. And uh, read only, this is the one for the read only. So this is the read only policy and the trust exactly as uh, previous uh, for role B. So this is the YDC provider. And uh, then here you see the uh, service account and uh, the namespace and uh, this is what uh, you need to kind of, you know, associate. Now, this is the cluster as I mentioned and uh, this is the YDC provider on the cluster, right? So let's go back to the EKS uh, portion of it and see where uh, how our pods are doing. So, so these are the pods and uh, let's look at the service accounts. 
uh, we have two service accounts uh, and one is the default service account and then these are the ones that we created the OIDC role A and OIDC role B. So let's open one of the service accounts and look at uh, the details of that service account. So as you can see, this particular service account is referring to this role over here, the S3 read-only role. And similarly, if you look at the service account B, it should be referring to the full access role. Okay. So now the next is, so let's look at the pod manifest. So we'll look at describe pod and see how pod A looks like. So the important sections here are this over here. So if you look at the service account, it refers to this uh, YDC service account and that uh, kind of refers to the role that we have, right? So uh, we will now just do a small demo. Uh, we'll try to execute into the pod, uh, into uh, one of the pods and try to look at, uh, we'll execute actually into both the pods, but both pod A and pod B. And uh, pod A is supposed to be read only, and pod B is going to be both read and write. So we'll kind of verify if we are able to do that, right? So let's just uh, get uh, started on that. So let me just execute into the pod and uh, so I'll just execute into pod A and I'll run the S3 command to list all the buckets. So as you can see, this worked uh, just fine. Now let me try uh, something. I'll try to create a bucket and see what happens. Ideally, this should fail. So let's uh, try to create a bucket called my awesome bucket uh, 0515 and see if uh, we are able to do that. So it said access denied, which is a good thing, right? So this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted pod A to be able to just be able to read the S3 buckets or list the S3 buckets and we wanted to be able to not uh, write or uh, or in effect create s3 buckets uh, while using pod a so let's exit out of pod a and go into pod b and try to do the same thing so we go to pod b here sorry and uh, we try to run the command to list all the buckets so we are able to list all the buckets. Now let's try what we just did uh, previously. Let's try to create a bucket and uh, see what happens. Boom. So we are able to create a bucket. So let's uh, just uh, again run um, S3LS to see if our bucket, my awesome bucket 0515 has been created. So as you can see, the bucket is listed here, right? So we want to do one additional uh, check here to see if we are able to delete uh, the bucket that we just created. So let's try that out uh, to see if uh, we are able to delete that bucket. Uh, so let's see, uh, let me pull up a delete command. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we are able to delete this bucket. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, yes, uh, I think it did it. Uh, so let's try, yeah. So this bucket doesn't uh, seem to be listed anymore. The my awesome bucket is uh, gone. So 
this pretty much concludes uh, uh, the demo. So we are able to uh, look at how we are, uh, you know, uh, restricting uh, the uh, access for pod A while we are providing a better uh, or more uh, privileges or more access to pod B while both are running within the same cluster, right? So we are able to kind of selectively provide fine-grained, uh, uh, you know, uh, access based on the principle of least privilege uh, to each one of these pods, right? So if you uh, have any questions, just, uh, you know, uh, post them on the comment section. Uh, this uh, pretty much concludes the video. Thank you so much.